In this there video, we're going to be making nitric acid using sodium bisulfate and calcium nitrate. Some info here, making nitric acid has always been a secondary process to a primary chemical reaction, and that's pretty basic. There are many ways actually to do it, and they're usually done with some sort of a nitrate and acid, usually sulfuric acid. However, commercially, the most common is the oxidation of ammonia. In this process, liquid ammonia is evaporated, heated, and run through a catalyst, which is made of platinum and rubidium, turning it into nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is then converted into nitrogen dioxide using these same catalysts, and the reaction equation for that is 4NH3 plus 7O2. The two catalysts yields 4NO2, there's our nitrogen dioxide, and six waters. At the end of this process, there is a water absorption column that absorbs the nitrogen dioxide in the presence of oxygen to form HNO3 or nitric acid. And that equation is 4NO2 plus 2H2O plus O2 yields four nitric acids even. Usually this is made in a percentage of 53 to 55% because the fertilizer industry is the one that uses most of the nitric acid and they make approximately 195 million tons of fertilizer a year. But unfortunately for you, I don't have any of this, so I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way with the nitrate and sodium bisulfate, which is a replacement for the uh, sulfuric acid. So in our materials, we need calcium nitrate, 43 grams, and sodium bisulfate, in 110 grams and this is very excessive the melting point of this is 315 degrees because we're going to do this dry and that's important because this first has to melt before the reaction can start to take place so the 315 degrees celsius is an important mark to meet otherwise the reaction will not take place the reaction is as follows calcium nitrate plus sodium bisulfate yields nitric acid plus calcium sulfate plus sodium nitrate the underlying calcium sulfate here is just for me to help me remember to talk about this. Calcium sulfate is known as gypsum. It is naturally occurring. It's also known as plaster of Paris, and most people know about that. It's pretty hard stuff. So when calcium sulfate comes as plaster of Paris, it's bonded to two waters. When they're mixed, you do get an exothermic reaction. Once it reaches 100 degrees Celsius, the calcium sulfate loses a lot of water, so you end up with calcium sulfate bonded to half a water. The other half of the water is bonded to another calcium sulfate, which is bonded to another half of water, and so on and so forth, and you get a very rock-hard substance that's difficult to break up, especially if it's in glassware. So that's the reason the sodium bisulfate is being used in excess by quite a bit. I think it's three times what I would need, and that's because the, cal uh, the sodium bisulfate will get in the way of the calcium sulfate producing this really hard substance. So in the end, when this is at the bottom of this round bottom flask right here, I can break it up and get it out of there rather than probably having to throw it away because I got plaster of Paris down there. For our methods, it's pretty straightforward. It's uh, just a simple distillation here. So the calcium nitrate and sodium bisulfate will be put in dry. The sodium bisulfate is monohydrate. It melts at 315 degrees and that has to happen for these two to react. So that temperature first needs to be reached and these will start to react. Once we distill it over, we'll have our nitric acid dripping in here. But because of the high temperature that this reaction starts at, a lot of nitrogen dioxide is produced. So what I plan on doing is um, venting that out the side here and then putting it through what I'm going to call my backflow resistor right here and then coming out here and then going into some distilled water through which when it dissolves, I hope to get some weak nitric acid probably for cleaning glass. So this has been used in a previous video and other experiments experiments that I've done and it works really well because backflow will eventually occur once this stops producing gas and a vacuum is produced this water is going to end up in here the weak nitric acid rather than going all the way back into here and destroying our product okay that's it for this let's go make some nitric acid using you know I talked about it already to make our nitric acid this is a pretty traditional uh, distillation set up there. So the sodium bisulfate and calcium nitrate will go in there. Nitric acid will come up. There's my thermometer and be distilled down here. But I have this right here, which is a catch because on this end, I'm going to take the extra nitrogen dioxide that's produced and run it from the end there to here and make some weak nitric acid. And this will backflow eventually. And I don't want it to backflow all the way back into here, which would ruin our nitric acid we're making by diluting it tremendously. So that's a catch. When it backflows, it'll end up in there. 110 grams of sodium bisulfate, pre-weighed. 40 grams of anhydrous calcium nitrate, pre-weighed. To get our nitric acid as concentrated as possible, we want to make sure there's as little water as possible. So 
even though this calcium nitrate came right out of a hot pan and I packaged it right away and sealed it good, I am going to heat it here more, just maybe another 10 or 15 minutes to make sure it's completely anhydrous. I'm pouring in the sodium bisulfate right now. Okay. And adding our calcium nitrate. Done. The cold water is running through the distillation tube and we have some ice around the water with the mixer hoping to make some weak nitric acid. So the calcium nitrate and the sodium bisulfate are in there re uh, ready and waiting to be heated. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on here and I'll check back periodically. 15 minutes later and we can already see at the very bottom the sodium bisulfate is already melting. No nitrogen dioxide quite yet. We're at 31 degrees Celsius, we got a ways to go. With the sodium bisulfate melting, we're starting to see a little bit of a reaction and you can see a little bit of nitrogen dioxide being produced. This is only five minutes later and the reaction is really starting to take off. As that reaction starts, you can see the nitrogen dioxide just pouring into this round bottom flask. Because of the high temperatures this is working at, as explained, there is nitrogen dioxide gas everywhere. The foaming can be a problem, but it's not too, too bad yet. If it gets too much, I'll turn the heat down until it dies off. That is some dark nitrogen dioxide. But what we can also see is the nitric acid is coming up and dripping back down there. And eventually it will get hot enough and it will make it up and over and be distilled. Right now we're at 74.1 degrees, 0.4 degrees, 0.5. This just started to steam up and I caught the first drop. Can't believe it. We can see our vessel for backflow is filled with nitrogen dioxide so you got to be sure that some of it is getting dissolved in there. We're 30 minutes out right here it's boiling really well and over here it is getting there. Evidence of that uh, brown color there which happened in the last five or ten minutes so we're getting quite a bit of nitrogen dioxide gas bubbling through here. Well this is slowly dying down here although there's quite a bit of nitrogen dioxide gas still being produced um, it's just clearing up so it's coming close to the end here. And on this side, this is completely covered in steam. I looked through the lines there. It looks like maybe there's about 80 milliliters, 70, 80, some, somewhere. But we'll have to dump it out to find out how much there is. So this is kind of interesting that, uh, oh, there it goes. The backflow. I was noticing that just before this happens that half of it gets this uh, uh, steam on a, the inside of it. But there you go. Glad this was here. This is obviously running low. I don't know if it's going to completely empty or not, but uh, I'm going to turn my attention now to how much nitric acid we made. These two are done reacting here, so I'm just going to turn this off. This has started to clear up. You can see the nitric acid down there, so I'm going to pour this out. I'll combine that with what's left over here for the weak nitric acid for cleaning. So I took this right off the assembly line, so to speak, and I'm going to put it in this 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. There's a lot of nitrogen dioxide dissolved in there, but we have, look on the side, 54 milliliters. I'm going to take this and put it in a container and cap it good. Um, it's interesting. I have no idea what strength it is. It looks pretty strong, but um, I'll have to weigh it and find out. Here's our weak nitric acid. Out of curiosity, I put a couple of tiny pieces of copper in there. I'm just going to pour this in and see if it will react or not. It, sure enough, it is reacting with the copper. You can see the uh, nitric acid work on the copper there for sure. So I'm sure this will make a great glass cleaner. It's 14.5 degrees Celsius out here, so I'm going to call it 15 even. So at 15 degrees Celsius, um, I measured out 10 milliliters exactly, and I got 14.35 grams. So if you divide that by 100, you get 1.43 grams. And again, at 15 degrees Celsius, that turns out to be around a 73% uh, nitric acid solution. So not too bad. And uh, just an interesting experiment doing it without liquid sulfuric acid.